In the world of sim racing today, there are some pretty crazy setups. There's pretty much no limit to how much you can spend optimizing your simulation rig, but what is limiting for most people is how much you can afford. If you're like me, spending thousands on building your perfect simulator just isn't possible, so that's why I've made this list of 5 best racing wheels under £100. In 5th place we have the Speedlink Drift OZ. This is the ultimate budget option and really is just a wheel for those that want to plug and play. This wheel comes with the brake and throttle pedal package and it looks pretty good for the price. The colour really stands out and would look good in any setup. Of course it has no force feedback and only 180 degrees of rotation which is the worst on this list. Also you need to check if this wheel works with the games you want to play. There have been issues with compatibility with some games. By far the biggest issue with this wheel is the suction cups that will give out if you have any crazy driving movements. With only 180 degrees of rotation that's very likely to happen. Keep in mind that for its price it's pretty good value for what you get. Being a wheel controller that works well and offers you a driving experience at a low price. You can find the Speedlink Drift for less than £20 at the moment. So overall on ratings I'm going to rate this a 5 out of 5 for price. Aesthetics it's going to get a 3 out of 5. Ergonomics is going to be 2 out of 5. Compatibility is going to be 1 out of 5. Doesn't feature force feedback. Build quality is 1 out of 5. The turning rotation is 180 degrees and stability is 1 out of 5. So overall the Speedlink Drift receives a rating of 13 out of 30. In fourth, we have the Logitech Momo. Although it is a little outdated, it comes as a whole package featuring the wheel, pedals and a shifter. It was initially designed for PlayStation 2 and has run its time with a lot of other more updated models now available. It does still work on PC and is compatible with most sim racing games, but it's always best to check. It looks a little dated and the feel isn't of the highest quality, but if you are looking for a cheap entry level option with some rudimentary force feedback, or something that has stood the test of time, this is a good option. You can find these wheels now second hand for around £55. The price we're going to rate at 3 out of 5. For aesthetics it receives a 2 out of 5. Ergonomics is a 2 out of 5. Compatibility is a 2 out of 5. Force feedback has some. Build quality is 2 out of 5. Turning rotation is 240 degrees. And stability is a 3 out of 5. So overall for the Logitech Momo we have a 14 out of 30 score. In third place we have the Thrustmaster Ferrari 458 Spider. Some manufacturers have taken advantage of car brands to help decorate their wheel and this is one offered by Thrustmaster in conjunction with Ferrari. Comes in at the lower end of the budget range but it's absolutely beautifully designed with less thrills of some of the higher end models. It's only compatible with Xbox One. The wheel also comes with the same pedals available as the T150 and TMX models. So you can expand your setup, just need to consider how you overcome the lack of the clutch pedal. Of course, there are a lot of drawbacks. There's no force feedback, which is a real issue. There's 240 degrees of turning rotation. However, it does have a good clamp. So where other wheels have sliding issues, this one doesn't at all. And although maybe not the most important feature, who wouldn't want to get behind the wheel of a Ferrari? This wheel might be the only chance that some of us ever will. It's definitely for a more casual racer. The extras on this wheel are too limited for anyone to be using it seriously. But for those looking for something cheap and cheerful, look no further. You can pick these up for around £45 second hand. In terms of scoring, at price we're going to give it a 3 out of 5. Aesthetics is going to receive a 4 out of 5. Ergonomics is a 3 out of 5. Compatibility is a 3 out of 5. It doesn't have force feedback. Build quality is a 2 out of 5. Turning rotation is 240 degrees. Stability is a 3 out of 5. So overall this wheel receives an 18 out of 30. In second place we have Hori who have designed two really quality wheels called the Apex and the Overdrive. The two wheels are designed to work with specific consoles so the Apex working with PlayStation 3 and 4 and PC and the Overdrive working with Xbox One. The wheel itself has a really good build quality made from higher end materials that are comparable with more expensive wheels. It is USB powered and the two pedal board that it comes with, although basic, does a good job. The look is really outstanding, it feels great, it comes with a lot of buttons and extras that you might not find with other, other wheels in the same price bracket. The biggest issues with the wheels are that there are no force feedback, but it does have rumble feedback. There's 270 degrees of turning rotation, but it doesn't really offer the best control. The pedals aren't of the highest quality and it doesn't include a clutch pedal, so that might have to be an additional purchase. 
Overall, it's a great entry-level accessory for those that aren't looking to break the bank, costing less than £60 for a second-hand model. So for scoring at price, it comes in at 2 out of 5. Aesthetic is a 4 out of 5. Ergonomics is a 3 out of 5. Compatibility is a 2 out of 5. There's no force feedback. Build quality is a 4 out of 5. Turning rotation is 270 degrees and stability is 3 out of 5. So overall, also rating at 18 out of 30. Finally, in the number one spot, we have the Thrustmaster TMX and T150. The TMX is designed to be compatible with Xbox One and PC, where the T150 is available for PlayStation 3 and 4. These wheels come with great force feedback, and for the price, you won't find anything better. It comes with a rumble effect, 900 degrees of lock-to-lock -lock turning, and included pedals. The pedals only have braking and accelerating inputs, so if you want a shifter, you will have to buy a third-party add-on. However, you could also map the clutch to one of the buttons on the wheel to function. The included pedals aren't the best quality, they do feel a bit plasticky, they don't offer great resistance, but the wheel itself is made from steel and plastic. Some of the buttons are duplicates, so when mapping buttons to functions, you don't actually have as many options as you might think. And also, another common issue is the fastening screw is plastic and does have a tendency to snap. It does have flappy paddles for changing gears, and for those racers that like the basics and don't want to spend too much on a genuine force feedback, this is the perfect model for you. This wheel is at the top end of the budget, but you can find them under £100 if you look around. In terms of rating, at price it's a 1 out of 5. Although it is cheap overall, based on our £100 budget, it is the maximum. So that's why it's a 1 out of 5. Aesthetics is a 4 out of 5. Ergonomics is a 4 out of 5. Compatibility is a 4 out of 5. It does have force feedback. Build quality is a 3 out of 5. Turning rotation is 900 degrees. And stability is 4 out of 5. So overall we score 20 out of 30. There are probably other wheels out there that are under £100. But I'd say these are the most common ones. If you want to get into sim racing, you've got to start somewhere. I hope this has helped for you to see what's available on a budget. And if I've missed one, please leave a comment. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.